Okay, let's take a look at kites today. I think the best picture of a kite, probably the most clear one, is uh, the one down here. Um, but it is labeled up here, it's just not as dark. So a kite is two consecutive pairs of congruent sides. So these two sides are congruent, and these two sides are congruent. Uh, it's got one pair of congruent angles. Those angles are congruent. These angles are not. That looks like it's obtuse, and that looks like it's acute. These angles are congruent. These sides are congruent and these sides are congruent, meaning for sides to be congruent, they're the same length, for angles to be congruent, they're the same measure. We also know that the diagonals are perpendicular. So let's take a look over here. This is kind of had labeled with letters, right? These two are both length B, they're congruent. These are both length C, they're congruent. The diagonals are perpendicular, right? There's a right angle there. Uh, the diagonals are D1 and D2, they are not the same length. Um, and one of the diagonals, D1, does actually bisect um, diagonal D2, but D1 is not split into half, it's just split. Um, so D2 is split into half. Those angles are the same, and those sides are the same, and those sides are the same. Um, okay, so this is kind of the picture. The area is one half D1, D2, and you'll see that's the same area formula for a square which is also the same area for a rhombi, but for all rhombi, meaning a rhombus. But that has to be true because it turns out that all squares are kites. All rhombi are also kites. And if you think about the definition of a kite, these are also then true for a square. Again, look back at our flow chart, and I know this can get a little complicated at times, but if you have a kite, you have congruent opposite angles, you have diagonals, um, one of them gets bisected. Um, you also have diagonals that meet at right angles. Well, boom, down here, a rhombus has that exact same properties. It has, I mean, it has four congruent sides, but it does have two pairs of congruent sides. The diagonals are perpendicular. So all the things that were true for a kite are true for a rhombi, and then are also then true for a square. So a square is a very particular version of a kite. It's got all the kite properties, but it also has four congruent sides and four congruent angles and all this stuff. A rhombi has all the properties of a kite, but it also has four congruent sides, not four congruent angles. Um, and then a kite is just kind of a general thing. So it's kind of weird how these quadrilaterals split into trapezoids and kites, and they come back together with a square, or a square literally has everything. It's got all of those properties and all of those properties. So we're really just focusing on generally what a kite looks like. And again, a square is a kite, a rhombus is a kite, but we are today just looking at probably the general version uh, of the kite. And again, if you look in this circle here, the kite circle then does whoom, encompass both a rhombus and the square. Okay, um, so let's take a look at all the different properties you could know then from a kite. Okay, so let's do some examples. Okay. Okay. So how would we prove, let's say I have this coordinate. So this is on some coordinate grid. How would you prove that this is a kite? Again, to prove that's a kite, you wanna show me that that length and that length are congruent. And again, you're gonna show things are congruent using the Pythagorean theorem. And then you wanna show me that that length and that length and that length and that length are congruent. And again, to find the length on a coordinate grid, right, you're just gonna use the Pythagorean theorem and you're gonna find numbers for this. So let's say this was like five over and six up. We wanted to find that length. You just say that five squared plus six squared equals c squared, 25, 36. And so then c would be the square root of 51. So you'd wanna show me that this is also the square root of 51, okay? And then you could prove to me that it's a kite. So you'd have to actually do the Pythagorean theorem four separate times on all these. So you're gonna draw a little bitty triangles. You're gonna do this one, up, you're gonna do that one, and you're gonna do that one. You're gonna do the Pythagorean theorem for all of those guys find all of their lengths, and then see whether or not it's a kite or not. Okay? Um, okay, what if I gave you, well, that's 
gonna this is not gonna be the, the best kite of all time. So let's say I told you this was a kite. Oh boom boom, boom boom. But then I gave you that distance. Actually, what if I told you that that was? Let me think. This was five, and that was six, and that was ten. Okay, what's the area? So the area formula you know is one half d1 d2 you also know that these are perpendicular not that that matters in this particular case and you also know that this diagonal does bisect that diagonal so if that's five that's also five so our area is one half times d1 we'll call that the 10 again if that's five that's five and then 16 And so we get an area of 80 square inches. So we can prove things are kites. We can find the uh, area of kites. Um, we can necessarily find, oh, let's say I wanted the, um, let's say I wanted the perimeter of this kite, right? The perimeter of this kite is going to be, I'd have to know this one, this one, this one, and this one. But look, this is its own little Pythagorean theorem in there because we know that's a right angle. So really what you have there is you have a five by six triangle. And actually I just did five squared plus six squared up here, which is that's the square root of 51. And then I could do this triangle, which is five by 10. So I could do five squared plus 10 squared equals C squared, and that's 125 equals C squared. C equals the square root of 125. Okay, so if I wanted to know the perimeter, I'd have two square roots of 51s, two square roots of 125s, and if you wanted it exact, this isn't gonna work much. You're not gonna be able to do anything with that. That one you could break down uh, a little more, and you could say two square root of 51 plus two times, uh, the square root of 125 is gonna be 25 times five, so that's two square root of 51, and then square root of 25 is five, five times two is 10, but you'd have to stop there, okay? Because you couldn't go any further than that. If you wanted to go to decimal, that would be fine. So that'd be the perimeter, that would be the area. Um, so we can find perimeter, we can find area. Uh, again, the nice part is, is that this is 90 degrees. Once you know that's 90 degrees, you can do all sorts of things. So, giving me a kite again. I could even give you that this is six, and I could give you that this, let's say, is like 42 degrees. Since you know that's a right angle, you could find things. So you could find that distance y, and you could find that distance x if you were interested. Again, this is just trig then. So you could say things like cosine of 42 is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then you could type that out. You could say sine of 42 it's x over 6, and you could type that out. Okay, so y equals and x equals. Let's go up here and actually type that out quick. So what am I going to do? 6 times cosine of 42. I'm going to get 4.46. And I'm going to get 6 times sine of 42. And I get 4.01. Okay, so I can solve using trig. I can find these. I can use Pythagorean theorem. I can find the area, I can find the perimeter, and there's all sorts of relationships um, that I can do with this. Okay, hopefully this gets you started on uh, kites.